Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video. Now this week's video is all about fitting lights and doing a few other little jobs in the van. And here as you can see I've just bought these fog lights off eBay. They were about 50 quid for the pair but they do have nice glass fronts and they're standard H3 bulbs for fog lights. And we've got this really cool bracket at the bottom that holds the bolt on and means that the head is actually a tiltable so the light can tilt. Um, like angular left to right in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and I've just drilled an 8mm hole in the bumper and then slotted that through and then stuck a, a washer and a spring washer and then an M8 nut on the bottom and yeah they're just clamped down like that and you can tilt them up or down or left or right uh, really easily and then I did the exact same on the other side too and well they're not exactly in the same place but near enough and then I put some 12 volt Lucas bulbs in them, but uh, we'll find out more about what happened to them later on in the video. But for now, that's those lights fitted. And now I'm going to move on to upgrading my burner flue to 5 inch from 4 inch. I'm going to <laughs> attempt to remove this. A bit dark, innit? Let's give this give you a bit of that. There we are. Alright, ready? Ah! I have had this off before when I was um, sealing this up, I sealed, that's why I want to redo it because I did it the wrong way around, I had to put the sealant on, RTV sealant, yum, because um, it's backwards, you want the top layer to sit inside the bottom layer so all the shit that's inside dribbles down when it gets hot and then goes back inside the burner otherwise if you've got it outside going over uh, the smoke you might be worried might come out the other way but it doesn't but what happens when you've got it the other way what this is this goes over this one and then the liquid starts dripping down and you can see some drips and it's toxic stuff so you don't want that <coughs> We've got to try and remove this. This is one mil, so you can literally just crush it. But it's lightweight. The van weighed 3.3 tonne. Did I tell you? I weighed the van yesterday. It weighed 3.3 tonne. I was shocked. Only half a tank of fuel and half a tank of diesel. Because I was worried it was going to be overweight. Because last time I weighed it, before the ceiling and shower went in, it was 3.3 tonne. But I have had a clear out and got rid of some weighty stuff. So yeah, well happy with a full tank of fuel and diesel. That's another 100 kilos. So 3.4 tonne. But that ain't bad. I put on my poll 3.3, 3.5 on the Instagram and 3.6 and most people voted 3.6 then 3.3 and only a few people voted 3.5 but yeah. <sighs> right I'll be back when I get this off. Burners are dusty, that is one thing. Dusty and dirty. Okay, are we ready? There we are. Very dusty. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, see what it looks like outside? That's good, isn't it? That's what you want. <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's go on and take it off. Okay, now I've got to get over there. Ignore what I'm doing. Yeah, so that's how long the flue is, not very long at all. And I'm going to be chopping it down to here. But I do want an extension, so you could make it this long. Because longer flues have a better draw. Okay, so sorry you're on the wonk, but I've had to uh, weld this in, because... Um, yeah, uh, it occurred to me that the old flue is in there, I had to cut it off around the weld, uh, which then means the 100mm hole saw won't go in there, so I've got to use the 125 and I've measured the middle and now I'm going to drill the hole and hopefully not make a huge mess. <laughs> Ah! 
and that was that. <laughs> it's very close to the back wall. Uh, I mean, it's on the back wall of Burma. It's just that close. Um, but that still fits in there, so no problem. Now I need to weld that in there, which is also not fun at all because it's like 0.8 mil steel. So I'm gonna crack on doing that and I'll catch you guys in a bit. It's welded down there. And yeah, that turned out all right, you know. Uh, the other one was done with the gas welder and this is done with the gasless one. And yeah, it's turned out pretty good. I put this in so it kind of kept the shape of this one, didn't distort it. Um, but I've also welded through to it now, so this is never coming out. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> never mind. Uh, and here's the thing off the battery that fell off uh, while I was drilling. Um, but yeah, it all goes in. I uh, made these two holes bigger and slots all in and then I can test it. Um, this weekend is supposed to be quite chilly so I'll be lighting the burner but it, I haven't cut it down at the top yet. I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to cut it lengthways a bit to expand it and then I might weld a strap on to, to keep it bigger and then it should be slot onable um, onto the top so you can extend the flue in when you're stationary and it's windy and you're struggling for enough draw you can stick another length on. So that's the idea at least. It might not work out and I might scrap the whole idea, but I'm gonna try. Okay, so good morning everyone. We're gonna do a little, excuse the music. We're gonna do a little um, test before I resume with the wiring this morning. I want to lift this solar panel um, because I wanna check that a meter is gonna be high enough because I'm gonna order the bar to make these tilt finally. Because they will tilt. I'll show you all you need to make them tilt. All you need is a little 10 mil bit for your impact driver. Then you just undo the ends. There's one. They're just not. Oh, I should probably put a spring washer on them to be fair. They're literally just a bolt, an M6 bolt with a, a washer on. Steady. Now the Wi-Fi is attached to this as well. Whoa. There we go to there. That would work. Okay, so in the cab, this panel is going up. We have LED work lights, which is going to be the left lights. We've got LED light bar, which will be the LED light bar I fit to there, but I, I'm not doing that this weekend. Um, then I've got windshield light bar, which I'm just going to ignore again. And that one's going to be right lights, so you've got left, light bar, and right. Then there's the starter battery voltage, which would be nice to know, because I don't know it in the cab at the moment. The off-road lights are going to be the ones I fitted the other day, the fog lights. Here are the rear lights with a nice middle finger and uh, that one's yeah just gonna be rear lights and zombie lights are gonna be the uh, strobe lights so it, it will flash you know so ah, I thought it was a pretty cool control panel it was about 30 quid but I, I liked it the quality of it over the other ones um, which you just put stickers on I preferred this one but yeah that's gonna go up there in the roof I need to space it away I think because it's too deep but that's okay I can do that um, I'll just make like some ply and paint it black. Um, and then I've got seven core trailer wire, which I think I mentioned before. And that's going to go along there, down there, and then the positive of this is going to go to the ignition uh, stud on the behind the fuse box. There's an ignition stud, uh, which is what all of this runs off. It goes to a fuse box actually, which is what it will go to. It will go to like a five amp fuse. And then it will go under the floor, the seven core trailer wire, and through that bit of ducting there which will go back through and into the electrical box which will then have six different relays for each light excuse the rubbish down here I need to take the rubbish but yeah it's gonna have a relay for every single light not that obviously for each output will go to a relay to trigger the relay and the relays will be in there and they will run off 24 volt so all the lights will be run off 24 volt apart from the front fog lights because they're 12 volt bulbs um, they're going to be run off 12 volt, but that's easy enough to do. So what I've got to do now is I want to cut this hole here for this and um, 
try and get this headliner down a bit and then I want to run the seven core cable all the way through and back into the back. Then that's kind of the cab done and then I can move on to back there and I can put all the relays in and then run all the wires from the relays through the roof to the individual lights um, on the because they're all around the roof and I also need to mount the rear lights. to I made this board as you kind of briefly saw earlier and then what I've done is it had this bit extra on and I had the screen that I wanted to mount in the cab anyway but the cable wasn't long enough so I extended the cable so now the cable's long enough and uh, the screen's on there now but it's not plugged in the other end and I got that board on two of the screws snapped but they're just cheap screws and uh, this is the trailer wire coming down from the head unit head Headliner, <laughs> not head unit. And then they all come over the headliner and then they come back and down this corner through the ducting that I showed you earlier, which goes through the cab and into um, underneath the electrical box. There we are. Look at it. And all the cables are hidden under there and then they poke out just over there. I had to pull them all out as well because I wanted to put them behind that bit of metal. This goes across the corner. <laughs> Sorry, that was annoying. I got my nice little From Rust to Road Trip National Park sticker up there. And then over here, I've got my Bimble Solar sticker, my Max Van Life one, my Rusty Rose, and my Lenny. Just the special few. Well, Bimble Solar's not particularly special, but still, <laughs> just my ones. And then Bimble Solar, uh, because that one doesn't exist anymore. I managed to find that in the bottom of a box somewhere. I didn't actually have one anywhere. So happy I've got one Max Van Life sticker. Anyone remember from those days? <laughs> Good to have you around still. Um, and yeah, the Lenny Seckers are now gone. I need to take them off the website actually because I think they're still on there. And the nearly out, but I'll order, always order more. So if you are interested in a sticker, the link is in the description. Um, it's on my shop website if you look in the description. So if you're interested in a sticker, shop's link is down below. Oh my God, people, look. They can have the burner door open. It doesn't smoke inside. Mad. Love it. That's what I've always wanted. Right, I'm going to shut that before that piece of fire. Okay, so I feel nothing today because it has been so mad. I've only just finished, and as you can see, the main lights aren't on. Reason why? I forgot that they were 12 volt bulbs and wired them to the 24 volt, and they blew. <laughs> So I've actually bought 24 volt bulbs rather than swapping it to 12 volt now. So all the lights, apart from the van lights itself, are going to be 24 volt. So it's basically a bit simpler to understand. Though. It might even be more powerful. But yeah, as you can see, we got the markers as usual all working. We got our lovely strobes. The camera does not like flashing lights. Um, we got side lights there, and then you move around here. And we got more side lights and they light up the garden beautifully look at that all the way over to there and then we come over here and you can see the two poking through the awning and then we've got the flashing ones for when you're going uphill is my plan to flip them on if you're going uphill in the dark flip them on just in case they can't see <laughs> um and yeah and all the marker lights and i think it just looks awesome now look at it look at it just a beauty. I can't wait till I get this front one stuff. I really wanted to see how they were looking. They were the best ones. All the rest are kind of just decoration. They're the main functioning ones and they're not even working. No, the reverse ones are going to be a game changer. Absolute game changer. Once it's all lit up, look how cool it looks. So you can flick them off. So if I flip that, just that's just the left side. That one stays on. So that one's left. That one flicks that one off. That one's right. That one flicks that one off. That's the 
driving lights, but that's not on. And the rear lights, that would flick off. For some reason, the reversing camera's not working. I think I must have bodged a cable while I was taking down the whole headliner, but yeah. Um, and then we've got the voltage, which is really nice here. And then here we've got the zombie lights, which is the, the, the flashes that you can see just about in front. Sorry, it's so dark. That's as bright as the camera will go. But uh, yeah. And then we got Rose's main headlights. So we get to compare these to the fog lights when they're on, but currently they're not on, so yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys today and I'll catch you guys tomorrow and I'll explain a bit more how I've done it. So, hello everyone. Look what we have here. I've put in this switches. So what happens is this has a 12 volt feed from the 12 volt fuse box. This then uh, goes to all of these switches and when you flick one on that sends the 12 volt feed down through this trailer wire down to the relays down here. Now the relays down here they're connected to the negative of the battery um, then the positive trigger of the relay is connected to those switches as I said but it's also connected to the switches in the front of the van and that means I can switch them on from in the cab while I'm driving if I want to park up or whatever or I can flip them back here and they can be work lights because they run off the leisure battery so I can flick uh, the reverse lights on and I can have a work light out the back of the van which will be very useful in winter or late evenings and then I can flick the left and the right one on as well so the relays, uh, they all have another trailer wire, which is this grey one there. That runs, and that's 2 mil cable, so I ran the positives of the relay, the load, all to here. And they've all got their individual fuse. Each circuit has its own individual fuse and relay. And then they all go out up to the lights. So here are the two roof ones, which are left and right. And then down there, I don't know if you can see all those red cables just there. Yeah, those, they all go down through the floor and they go to the strobes at the back, the reverse lights at the back and the fog lights at the front. They all go under the van. Um, it was just easier that way. So yeah, I've tidied it all up in here as you can see. No cables running across. We've got all of the speaker cables running round now to the head unit rather than straight across. I've added a new board there to fit all the relays. I will be adding another relay there for the light bar, another relay there to switch the solar panel on and another relay here to switch this solar panel on and off so you can isolate them and they will also get a trigger from that but I, that's next year's job I just can't be asked this cupboard has seen too much today and I'm glad to put it away and I'm glad it's being put away tidy this time because it was all temporary before but now it's all nice so two of these lights if I flick that on it adds 35 down to 11 that's 24 watts so they use 12 watts each and they were claimed for 50 watts on ebay which i knew was just an absolute joke good morning everyone welcome back um excuse the music in the background i'm listening to tunes um just looking at my plants uh, and enjoying the sunshine uh, while it's out now this morning's task is to um run my diesel heater ducting from the diesel heater all the way through to the cab via a T-piece that I bought which has adjustable valves. Uh, so, well, adjustable ends, you know, so you can turn it on or off. And... And that means I can have just hot air going into the cab or hot air going into both the cab and the back or just the back. Um, so that's really good. But yeah, I'm gonna get that sorted today. And then the other thing is the rear anti-roll bar bushes. I've got them now, so I'm gonna be doing them um, today, hopefully. Hopefully the weather holds out as well. In other news, yesterday I went into town and got picked up the mushroom collect, uh, mushroom extract fan, which is um, for the shower. I clicked and collected that off eBay, so I went and picked that up yesterday. And then also, I went and finally got the correct tap fitting. So now I have hot water in the kitchen as well as in the shower. So that's all good. But anyway, I'm going to crack on. Uh, I've just got some banana bread in the oven on its uh, baking away. And, but yeah, I'm gonna lift up all the floor, and run this hatch, and run this diesel heater ducting under the floor to, and got drill holes and make a mess. Again, I've just tidied everything. I cleaned the cab like mad yesterday. I got everything out, swept the whole thing. Uh, best trick for cleaning dashboards, because they're textured, good for cameras too, but not too much water, is water and soap in a bowl and uh, with just a paintbrush. I just use an old paintbrush that's really stiff, and it frees it up like a new paintbrush then. Uh, so you end up with a good paintbrush and a really good cleaning tool and it gets it all in and all the dust out, all the cracks and just some washing up liquid and some water 
just go along with the dashboard so it all looks nice and clean now. The reverse camera's fixed, everything's working in the cab. The switches are working in the back so they can turn on the lights. I did that last night while we were eating dinner. I was like, hang on, I'm gonna turn my lights on. So yeah, really excited about how all the lights are working, apart from the front ones, really disappointed in that. But I'm gonna sort that out and then do the LED light bar as well. Um, but currently I'm sorting out things for the MOT, so that's why I'm doing the anti-roll bar bushes because I think it might fail the MOT. Uh, but if not, I just want to get them done because they are worn. But anyway, I'm gonna stop boring you with this and let's crack on pulling up my floor which is easy because I do it every day. <laughs> so in this bag here I've just got bits of all old diesel heaters that I've installed including this little off cut. So what my plan is here is to squash this and then tape that up probably with aluminium tape which I've got just there and this is going to be my joiner piece. You can buy joiner pieces but I was like what's the point when I've got Load, I've got three. T I've got two T pieces. One T piece I just bought, and then a Y piece down there. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I might as well make use of what I got, as I usually say. Make use of what you got rather than buy new. Why, why buy new when you've got what will work already around? So yeah, and I've also got a whole bag of Jubilees. Hopefully that's enough actually. I mean that is. But as you can see, so I've taken this up now. So it's going to screw to there. That beam down there, just under there, and then it's going to go out. That's the middle of everything, the van, the box, everything. Because uh, there's a leg there, I could drill through it, but then there's also a cross member in the van there, in the back of the bulkhead. So probably not go there. This side makes sense, but also a toolbox goes here. But if I went here, then it would be towards the driver's side, so it wouldn't actually ever point at me. Whereas I put it the passenger side, then it would point, I'd be able to angle it towards me, because it would be further towards the passenger seat, if you get me. As you can see, it's all in bits at the moment and I need to tidy up. But yeah, this is the ducting I'm using. Uh, I can only buy it in two meter lengths, that's why I'm having to join it. Uh, sorry for not mentioning that. And it's the uh, the cardboard stuff, because it's I think it's a bit better, because the other uh, aluminium stuff is, tends to fall apart. There's a the diesel here, you can just about see it. I'm gonna put that on there, run this down here. The join's gonna be uh, about in this toolbox area here. And then another piece, I've got two bits, as I said. T piece here, bit to the cab, and then bit to in here. So let's crack on. So here it is everyone. I decided to cable tie it up so it's out the way now. So actually these can go back now and I've got more room. And then here I put my gimbal under there and that goes around the water tank. So you know it's not directly warming it and it's still cold down there but it should just generally exert heat and make it a bit warmer down there. Again same with the clothes it should keep there nice and dry. Again it runs above. I've just stapled cable ties in and then yeah just use the cable tie to cut round and then it goes round there around there and then here's the vent if you can have a look down there you can see there's the t-piece and then it comes up to this vent here I haven't done that bit there reason is the it's a 75 mil for this and it's the exact size as the bit where the clamp goes on so it's 75 mil internal diameter which means it's about 80 external diameter the ducting is and I don't have an 80mm hole saw, it goes from the 75mm, uh, my set goes up to that, and then I've bought 100mm here. Here are my two hole saws that don't fit on my set. There's a 127 and there's a 100. Um, and that's 5 inch and this is 4 inch, that's what I did my flues with and stuff. Uh, but that's just too big for that because that is the size of the front. <laughs> so I need an 80mm hole saw, um, but I don't have one of them right now. So. I'm just going to wait because it's not that important. I've got to do my anti roll bar bushes, that's more important. So I'm going to leave this for now. I've got ducting here so I can turn it off down there like I have. So it's not going into the cab. Don't need it yet. It's not frosty outside, obviously. It's September. Oh, it's August. I know it's terrible weather, but it's not that cold, <laughs> luckily. Um, but yeah, I will get that done, but just not yet because I need to drill an 80mm hole through the box and through the cab. So I'll just do that another day. But yeah, I thought I'd just show you before I put the floor back down. But Next time I need to do the ducting, I won't need to take all this up. So that's all done now. And I don't have to, I was lifting up that hatch before and poking the diesel heater out so I could use the diesel heater. Um, but yeah, now at least I don't have to do that. 
uh, and it should keep all this moderately warm that was partially the design to put in the diesel heater all the way over there because the fuel tank is just there as well so it kind of would have made more sense to put the diesel heater under there because there's nothing under there either and then have it go straight to the fuel tank and then go to the two outlets here but I did think about it going around the water tanks and stuff so you can leave it on in the day and it keeps the floor warm kind of so yeah I'm gonna leave you here and I'm gonna do the anti-roll bar bushes they are just these I've showed doing anti roll bar bushes before they're the same they're just a different size they're just these d-shaped bushes same as last time and they just go around a clamp around the axle uh, and yeah that's literally just it so you've seen that before if you didn't see that video I'll stick it up in the card up here but yeah more more bushes to do because things wear out on old vans but yeah there's the ducting uh, the out outlet of the diesel heater and it's looking quite nice apart from the silver don't like that so yeah that's it oh and i just wanted to show you i've got a few finishing touches i got this from um the storage my mum's storage uh along with all this stuff which used to be like in my bedroom and stuff at my mum's so i've got some books here now and i've got a little picture back there and then a candle holder i made in school and stuff so yeah getting little finishing touches up bit of trim there i don't know if i showed you that um, picture of my mum's cat <laughs> and a, another picture I got a few pictures up and stuff um, and an old van plan I thought that was quite cool to have so yeah making it a bit more homely in here I'm gonna catch you guys later or tomorrow oh I got lots to do and it's like one o'clock so I'm gonna crack on I'll see you guys in a bit just reheated up last night's risotto mushroom and uh, pea risotto so yeah I'll be eating this and uh, while I was doing the anti-roll bar bush, uh, a, a bolt snapped. So, yeah, luckily only one of four on one side. I haven't done the other side yet. So let's hope that you get no snaps the other side. Um, and I think it is just a nut on the back. Fingers crossed. So hopefully nothing too major. And it's all M8, it's a standard Mercedes. European are good for that, just standard threads. None of this imperial bollocks or any of that, just simple M8, M10, all just standard threads. So hopefully not too big of an issue, but I'm gonna crack on and eat this, and then crack on and do that, and I'm gonna shut up saying crack on and just eat this. So, next job. Hole in the roof. I uh, can't remember if I showed you, but I got a mushroom vent, which is over here. So I bought this off eBay, I think it was about 20 pounds, I think somewhere about that i can't remember um it's got a little fan in it it's 12 volt i believe not 24 yeah it's 12 uh, which is fine because it's going to run off my light not my light circuit but it's going to run off the same power as that light basically that light's going to run off this circuit more than this fan run off that light circuit but basically it's good because they're the same voltage i hadn't even thought of that at the moment but yeah that is going to go on the roof obviously not in here and then there's a little inner bit that comes with it they didn't provide with any screws though even though you got a screw into their thing which is rather unusual but yeah that just goes over the hole like so and you can see the bottom of my solar panel there so i need to uh lift the solar panel so i can obviously get to get to, to there and put this on and i've measured it and the height between here and the bottom of the solar panel is exactly the same worst comes to worst I can take the mushroom bit off. I wouldn't mind having it like that because at the end of the day, the solar panel is a massive mushroom. And if water gets down there, oh no, it goes into the waterproof shower room. <laughs> so it'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice obviously to have that. But if it doesn't work out, um, that will fit under the panel. But yeah, so let's go and lift the solar panel and take some OB1 up there. And this doesn't need screws, I guess, as uh, it just goes through there, so that's good. So, this is underneath the solar panel. And I'm just casually hoovering my roof. <laughs> now, this little mushroom bed does have a little rubber seal, which is pretty cool. But as per usual, I never trust anything other than Obi-Wan, so I shall be adding a little bead of Obi-Wan. Qua, that was close to that wire. This wire is my LED strip wire for the um, sink lights. Comes across from the switch near the door. So that's the back of the van. <coughs> and yeah, 
<laughs> Interesting. Okay, never mind. That's okay. I'm sure not all of you approved the way I get to back here. <laughs> but I am me and I am crazy. And uh, oh, a lot of people were uh, noticed finally about my bare feet, which nobody ever did while restoring my van. I was like constantly in sliders. I call them my safety sliders for those that don't know. And uh, although I appreciate the, um, the care, um, I'm I'm fully aware that like like goggles sometimes I don't wear them and that is wrong. Goggles always wear goggles, always wear a welding mask. Um, best to wear gloves uh, for all that welding stuff and grinding and stuff, stuff that can damage your health. But at the end of the day, an alternator falling on your foot and stuff, I get it. It can break your foot, but you just kind of be clever and you gain good good reflexes. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm constantly moving my foot out of the way if anything's falling at all. This leaf is moving around. But anyway, that's just that. Um, I do care marginally about safety. We just uh, draw the line somewhere differently. <laughs> Don't know why I didn't do this before actually. I'm looking forward to hearing how loud this is going to be. I think it's going to be quite loud being just Chinese. So as far as mushrooms go, it does sit pretty low profile. But should we see if it shuts? I'm not feeling confident. But let's see. First, I just wanted to say that I was gonna buy like aluminium things or steel bars and prop this up and put a rivnut in the bottom one because obviously this got rivnut in and then that needs to bolt in. Then I was concerned about like, it doesn't budge that way at all. Like it's sturdy from those two bolts at the bottom. I'm not worried about it swaying like that. But I was more worried about the bars bowing and then it just collapsing. Um, and then I was just got these bits of pallet wood temporarily. I was like, hang on, why don't I just use pallet wood? I just put a nut and a bolt in that end and just a bolt into the rib nut there. And yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now. Because that's just like blatantly obvious to me. And I don't know why I didn't think of that before. But yeah, let's see if this shuts. It should do because I think it slowly dips. Let's see. Yeah, that's gonna have to come off. That's way too high. Okay, I had a feeling. It should be okay without this, because it is like literally in the middle of a panel. Well, not literally, but like back to front is not far off the middle. That rib's about in the middle, and the rib was in the way. Good thing I checked where the light was first, where the rib was before drilling the hole, because the rib was right in the middle of the shower. That's why the hole's not in the middle of the shower, because there was a rib in the roof there. It's pretty close to the panel to be fair, so that is never going to get any water in. Uh, even, I think if you were driving, I think the only time you might risk getting a bit of water in is when it pulls on the roof and you pull away. Because that's when I get water in my skylight, if I leave that open a jar. But, again at the end of the day, it's water going into a shower room. Well when I find a seal for this thing, because at the moment it will just probably go into my roof. It's getting dark now and I need to head off to Hereford to go to work tomorrow. Oh, and I did make fun, um, pizza breads. So, to go with my falafels that I made as well. I know you're all going to think I'm mad for making everything. Here, I've got falafels. And then I've got all my salad, so I can have salad and falafels in, in a pita bread for lunch at work. Oh, I'm too prepared, I am. <laughs> Always loving the sticker fridge. If you're on there, say hi. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. Um, I might put a clip in of my lunch tomorrow.
here's the pit of bread I made. Look at that. Pretty happy with that. Show you a bit better. Nice. And we're gonna have some spinach, tomato, lettuce, cabbage, cucumber, and peppers all chopped up with some homemade falafels that I made that I was on, on about. Look at that. Yum. Look at that. Filled. So that's going to be it for this video. I've just finished editing the video up to this point and yeah, it's been a bit all over the shop this video, but hopefully, oh, I don't know how regular they're going to be still actually, but soon we got the self build get together coming up soon. And if you're going to be there, I'm going to be there. So if you want to see Rose, it's my last meet I'm going to be at this year. And then I'm just working through October, ready for Scotland in November is the plan. So touch wood, that all happens and goes to plan. And hopefully MOT next week, in a week tomorrow, uh, I'm going to book the MOT in. No, no, two weeks tomorrow, I'm going to book the MOT in. So, yeah, fingers crossed for the MOT for this as well. I'm sure it will be fine. It's in better nick than it was for last year's MOT, so I can't see how they're going to fail it. It's been through an MOT, it then got stopped by the DVSA, and they all said it was good, and then since then the whole of this summer I've just been replacing bushes and shocks and alternators and belts and you spent loads of money and you can see that it's been spent so hopefully the guy I'm taking it to he should be pretty reasonable and he should just go yeah this guy spent a lot of money on it you can see that obviously if there's anything dangerous you know you pick it up but hopefully he won't be too fiddly about it and fail it for some silly little corrosion spot because there's one or two little rust spots but I'm sure they'll be fine you cannot stop the rust on these, and Scotland is going to do it no good, but I'm going to plaster it in Lanigard before I go, because I've still got more. Uh, got a lot done on the van, obviously, these last few weeks, with the lights, well happy. Been driving around, the lights have been awesome. Um, really useful, I chopped some firewood up last night, stick the lights on, no more of this fucking around with head torches and stuff. It's really good, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. The lights, they're, they're more than useful, like, people just think, you know, we us lot that spend money on lights think we're just doing it for looks and just to be silly I mean it is partially for that they do look cool but they also function really well for parking up at night and as work lights when you're outside chopping wood so yeah really happy with them glad I got them on before winter hopefully the bulbs for the front fog lights turning up today and uh, I'll fit them but that won't be in this video because that should be edited by then Next week's video is going to be maybe a bit more on peps because uh, Aiden and Biff are coming back uh, and we're going to do some work on peps again. Weld up the bonnet, weld up the wings, just any holes and filler that's in him and rust. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. You get the rough idea. Lots been happening and I hope it's all good your end and stuff. And yeah, hope to see any of you at the self build get together. It's £15 a night, 45 quid for the weekend. It's not too bad. I can just about shout out there. <laughs> so yeah, if you did like the video, make sure you drop a comment down below, hit the like button, and I'll see you in next week's video.